What's up guys? In today's video we're going to be handling a whole bunch of little things, odds and ends, that need to get done to get the blazer on the road. Alright, next thing we're going to have to tackle is this massive oil leak. So, let me see if I can bring you guys up here. In behind this distributor, down there, there's a, an angled oil fitting where my finger is. I don't know how all the cameras may pick it up in the dark, but basically it's an L that comes out of the back of the engine block and then from that there's an oil pressure sensor that feeds data to the TBI and to the gauge on the gauge cluster. Now when I run the motor um, it basically just blows oil past that fitting and the way it's wedged in there against the um, against the uh, firewall I can't tighten it with everything on there. So the sad and annoying part is that we're gonna have to pull out the distributor, which means we're gonna have to reset the time when we put the distributor back in. Um, but there's really no other way around it. So we're gonna have to yank out the distributor, um, get that oil uh, sensor and the um, L fitting out of there, and then I'll be able to order. Cause then I can't even figure out what the correct uh, sensor is. And there's probably four or five different ones that it could be based on the body type. Um, so we're just gonna have to yank it out of there and, and see what's what. So the cap just comes off. There's two screws that hold it down. Um, I also went ahead and unhooked the coil, just set it over here for now. From the coil, there's this plug, which has two wires. And this plug from the body, which has got, what, four wires in it. Um, so you unplug those. And then again, down here, where my finger is, there is a bolt that once you loosen it, um, we should be able to pull the distributor straight up. Um, and hopefully we might get lucky and since we're not going to turn over the engine um, if we can put the distributor back in the way we got it out uh, should the timing should be set there's our pulled out distributor shaft I'm going to get a new gasket for it um, just in case but all the bearing surfaces look good the gear looks good you know it's nothing really to it um, so now I can give you guys a better look in here so all of our oil is coming out of let me see if I can rearrange my positioning on the camera here out of this guy right there oops right there is just dumping fuckloads of oil out of that fitting like I was watching it like squirt up out of there um, which isn't good so now we can unhook that fitting and uh, get that thing out of there. So here's the angle piece. You can see what's left of an O-ring. There's some JB Weld. Uh, from what I've seen, these aren't even supposed to use O-rings. You're supposed to basically just use some thread tape or something like that. So we're going to get this cleaned off. We're going to reuse this little L piece. And I'm going to buy a new one of these sensors because they're like 15 bucks. So I finally got the timing set back the way it's supposed to be. Um, let me tell you guys a little bit of this, the timing on a, on a TBI truck. It's very different than a standard small block Chev. And um, there's a lot of misinformation online. Basically, the first part is pretty much the same. Set first cylinder, which is the driver front cylinder, to top dead center on the compression stroke. Uh, a couple easy ways of doing that is if you have a buddy, two-man system, one guy bumps the key, the other guy puts his finger on the hole and waits for pressure. The other option is you can just stick a piece of uh, paper towel right there. Once it blows over, you know that that's it. Then, um, top dead center, and you should also, that tells you your compression stroke. Top dead center, down there, there's a like a little zigzag piece, um, and the big V is zero. So you line up the crank, the line on the crank, a balancer with the zero mark. That puts you top dead center. Then you drop in your distributor with the rotor pointing towards the number one piston. Um, because it's a helical cut gear, it may want to swing in there, it may not want to. You need to walk it back a tooth or whatever. So the, the final location, resting location, points to the number one cylinder. If you don't see it on the oil pump, it's fine. Just put a wrench on the engine, crank it over very slowly. Mine just dropped right in once it lined up. After that, um, you need to disconnect this wire here, it's a brown or tan and white wire right here. Um, this disconnects the computer's timing adjustment. 
fire up the engine. It's going to run like crap because you're running at zero degrees timing. Rotate the distributor until you're at exactly zero degrees using a timing light. So the timing light is looking for zero degrees, which is the balancer mark, lining up with the notch in that big V. And once you have it there, lock down your distributor, turn everything off, turn the power, take the power cable off of the battery, reconnect that little wire I showed you guys, let it um, reset the ECU, give it like five minutes or something, battery back on, fire it up. Now with the timing light, you should see about 10 degrees of idle timing, so 10 degrees before top dead center at idle, um, and probably about 36 or 38 degrees all in, like past 4,000 RPM or whatever. Um, and so that's what we saw, truck runs great, super happy with it, I had a buddy of mine come over and help me, it made it a lot easier with two people. I ended up having to replace the rotor um, because the old one broke, uh, but I haven't replaced the cap yet, not too worried, it works really well. The other thing I did off camera is I got these beautiful new lenses for my turn signals and they look fantastic. So I now have clean, nice clean lenses. And the next thing we're gonna tackle is installing this guy, which is a transmission mount um, because our old one is real gross. So in order to pull out the transmission uh, mount, let me show you guys under here. Basically, I think they're all 5 8 There's two 5 8 bolts on each side. There's 5 8 bolts that hold the mount to the cross member. And then there's two 5 8 bolts that hold it up to the transmission. You can see it up there. Um, make sure you support the transmission with a jack like I do, either under the transpan or uh, behind the transfer case. But let me show you the difference. So this is our good new mount. Lots of rubber, lots of metal. You can see this is kind of enclosed, so it can move a little bit. This is our original mount. You can see there's almost no rubber left on it at all, and it's not really mounting or supporting anything. So this is junk. This bad boy is going back in. So now we're just going to bolt it back in. So next thing leak I found was power steering. These hoses were just jacked. Two new hoses, less than 30 bucks. Uh, easy to replace, basically just bolt on and off. I'm Max, this is Max Works. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.